Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it is our favorite time of the week, taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first thing up this week, some Lanny's Clip front flippers from Enrique Pena's X series. Coming in about 274, and at first glance, head on, this might appear to be very similar to versions of this that have, out there, that have been out there before. That's what I thought too until I pulled it, and lo and behold, a copper backspacer. Tiny little detail, yes, to be sure, but a nice little one. It looks especially good against this black canvas micarta right here. Really nice, and of course, being copper, it's gonna patina, do all that sort of thing as you use it. It'll kind of conform itself, personalize itself, I should say, to you and to your usage of the knife itself. Blade, a bit over three inches, M390 steel. That excellent, kind of classic slip joint styled clip point shape in a way, but this is of course not a slip joint. Great shape though, nonetheless, with that hollow grind there and the nice thin edge for all kinds of just everyday utility. We've got the frame locking mechanism right there. You've got the inlays on both sides, nice milled pocket clip and a front flip mechanism, or it's really more of a top flipper mechanism because it sits on the top, which means you can do regular finger, index finger flip stuff with it as well, not just thumb front flip style of opening. Both good options, both work quite well. Really nice. One of the cool things about these designs, I don't know if I've mentioned here on the channel before, is there's no extra stop pin here at the back. The stop pin is actually closer here towards the leading edge of the handle and there's a track inside the blade that the, the pin travels around. So you get the advantage of a nice clean look there on the back side. And overall, just a very nice clean look on the knife itself. This next knife, if you're watching this on Thursday when the video goes up, this knife is gonna be available tomorrow on Friday, the insert date here. Thomas, I'm not good with numbers. Calendars are difficult. Calendars are very difficult. Different every year. <laughs> Like four year anyway. This is the Jack Wolf Knives Laid Back Jack Slip Joint. It's the first of several slip joints on today's video and the first of many nice colorful designs. We've got a very colorful new knives video this week. Uh, but this particular knife is wearing a crew wear, or sorry, a jungle wear fat carbon on the front and back. It is a slip joint, like I mentioned. You've got M390 steel, roughly a three-inch blade, and I really like the uh, the naming scheme that uh, Jack Wolf is coming up for this stuff. Obviously, this is a kind of a traditional or a modern traditional version of a swayback style knife. So you've got the laid back Jack knife. Excellent naming, and that ties in to the packaging as well. I showed uh, the tubes that uh, the Jack Wolves come in last time we had one. You've got like a pocket slip, pocket slip, and some microfiber and stuff inside. But check out the uh, the Wolf there, kind of laid back doing his little surfing thing right there. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool knife as well. You can get it in natural black or green canvas micarta if you don't want the fat carbon right there. And the quality of these knives is downright excellent. Walk and talk, super snappy as you can hear. You've got titanium for the bolster here. Excellent powder metallurgy for the steel. Nice snap, full height hollow grind. Very, very aggressive cutter with the Warren Cliff shape right here. And these are, like the last drop, going to be extremely limited in quantity. So make sure to keep an eye on our Instagram page tomorrow, maybe around noon, I'm not quite sure the time yet, uh, for final pricing and drop details when they are available. The next colorful slip joint on the list is the Case Tony Bowes Panama trapper comes in about $84 and you've got a nice purple flamed maple or uh, they call it yeah, curly maple same thing technically the same thing or not the same thing I always use them interchangeably but they might actually be different Thomas How care, would I know? care to weigh in uh, it's a couple of ounces it's a nice purple in any case really nice stain really nice figuring going on you've got two blades in cases true sharp stainless you've got a California style clip point blade for the main one. And extra cool, I really dig 
this secondary blade. Not something you typically see on a lot of case knives or slip joints in general. Kind of like a bullnose skinner or almost a butcher knife, butcher knife style blade for the skinning blade on this trapper pattern rather than having something like a long spay blade. Really like that. It's graceful, nice, efficient slicing. Uh, should be easily achievable with this blade. I just, I'm really digging that. Walk and talk on these is also quite good. Got a nice half stop along the way, which you don't get on all case models. You get it here though. Really cool and something a little bit different for you slip joint lovers out there without even costing a whole heck of a lot. Next colorful slip joint is maybe less colorful, but at least it's not a standard black or something like that. We've got an ivory burlap micarta handle material on this Fox livery slip joint. Really sweet little knife. Also, uh, similar price to that case, about 87 bucks. Made in Italy, as opposed to America for that case. M390 steel, two and three quarters of an inch. Modified sheep's foot here, almost a bullnose sheep's foot in a way. It's kind of a uh, interesting hybridized shape right there, but I really like it. High flat grind, another nice everyday utility cutter. Excellent little, really cool little, little handles on them. It's a lightweight feeling knife, not too heavy, not gonna weigh you down. 1.6 ounces, comes with a black pocket slip as well. A little bit of a half stop there and a nice snap closed. A little bit less strong than some knives out there, some slip joints out there, but still very secure feeling. Gonna do a lot of good work for you day to day. Keeping the colors going, but not the slip joints going, we have a new Finch. And it's something that kind of crosses, you know, lives in some of the, one of those like in between places in terms of modern flipper knives and the old school feeling of classic slip joints. This is the Chernobyl Ant Flipper. These ring up at about $99 and they're named after uh, not you know, a particular insect you might find in the, uh, the fallout zone, but a, uh, a particular fly fishing fly that is apparently very famous. I'm not familiar with it myself. Perhaps some of you anglers out there can chime in. And the lines of this, it kind of has a classic sodbuster style handle and a little bit more drop to the blade for a, a quote unquote archetypal sodbuster blade, but you can definitely see the vibes in this overall shape. And that's where that kind of nod to the classic slip joints come in. You also see that in this particular handle, which is red G10, and it has been jigged as well, kind of like the old jigged bone knife handles. This is a liner locking flipper. You've got ball bearings at the pivot. You've got a nice crest there, the Finch glow in the dark crest on the front. You've got a milled pocket clip on the back, and you've got a 154 cm blade at about, or sorry, no, this is not a 154 cm blade. I'm so used to them using that steel, I, uh, I got ahead of myself. This is a Sandvik 14C28N blade. If you're unfamiliar with the alphabet soup, don't worry, it's an excellent Swedish fine grained steel, it takes a really nice edge, and it's got that nice horizontal grain that they do that helps everything feel a bit more premium too. Really cool. You've also got, this is another knife without a kind of visible stop pin. And in this case, the stop pin is actually captive on the blade and it rides in some tracks in the handle or in the liners themselves to act as the, uh, the stop pin there. So again, nice clean when you're uh, looking at the back side of the knife. And I don't know if this is something you might be using in a potential maritime environment. Nice and open back construction is gonna make it easy to keep clean of debris as well. More colors, we've got a new color in the Ice Wraith series from Ontario. This is the Terrain version, which has these translucent green jewel-like handles. Very cool. And it's not just a pretty face, you've got a really nice utilitarian blade there too. 25 bucks for these, 2.6 inches on that blade itself, 4116 stainless, good basic stuff, and a good basic shape for day-to-day -day usage. And it has to be said, with a handle that looks a little bit like a Jolly Rancher, it's certainly not a very threatening looking thing, which can come in handy in certain places for sure. This knife has a reversible pocket clip. It's also got a lock back to keep things nice and secure. And the cool thing about the translucent handles is you can see that mechanism working while you have the knife in hand. Dual thumb studs, lets you open it real easily. Really cool knife overall. Next up, we have got another great EDC knife, the Spartan SHF 3.25. 
but I am disappointed in these guys. It's not a very colorful knife. It doesn't fit in with what we've seen so far, but that's okay, because it's a very, very good knife. About $415 made here in the States to extremely high tolerances. S45 VN blade, three and a quarter inches long as the 3.25 name suggests. Titanium handle scales, reversible pocket clip, frame lock on the front side there, or back side, I should say rather. Just a slimmed down or scaled down version of the full-sized SHF folder. Feels just as tight. It really is one of those things that approaches Sabenza level quality and feel fantastic. Flat grind on the blade, that great steel, stonewashed finish, versatile shape overall. Excellent knife that's gonna work well in fancier environments as well as have a real comfortable time getting down and dirty. Next up, we have honestly one of my favorite gentleman's knives out there, the Ziba MS3, the Manhattan Special with a sub three inch blade, about two and three quarters. In fact, I love this knife. I have a couple versions of this. I've got an MKM version as well as one of the Zeba versions. It's got that nice executive pen-like profile we all know and love. It's got your choice of blade steels right now, M390 or this Damasteel blade. M390 versions start at 350. We're at 595 for the Damasteel here. Contoured titanium for the handles. We have in this particular case a carbon fiber backspacer. Nice milled clip here and the frame lock. It's one of those knives that, but for the flipper tab, folds up completely into that handle profile. It's really slim, doesn't take up a lot of space, looks super classy. And then when you go to go to use it, still looks super classy. Excellent pen knife style blade shape, gonna work great. And one of my favorite things to do with this knife, it always feels really good doing that lighter flick opening. Something about this design has always worked really well for that. These are back in stock after a long hiatus and I'm really glad because, well, quite frankly, they're awesome. Next up, we've got a custom button lock flipper to talk about and that is the tie down from Brian Tai. This is an integral carbon fiber handled knife. Very, very cool. You can see there are no seams, very intricate shaping going on overall. You've essentially got, it, it looks like the styling of a backspacer here, but again, it's one piece, it's all kind of melded and flowing together, but it still suggests those shapes that we're all kind of familiar with, so to speak. Also, we have got a Dama steel blade, four inches long, recurve, compound grinds, really nice. Uh, the carbon fiber itself is that unidirectional pattern, so it has a nice layered texture overall. Quite expensive knife, about $1,200 for all of this craftsmanship going on right here. Excellent action with the button lock. We've got that drop shut thing we all know and love with button locks these days. We've got the thumb studs if you'd rather open it that way. This is just such a fantastic piece and is only one of several Brian Tai Customs we have in stock right now, but this is the one that caught my eye the most, so that's what I brought it out for the video. Next up, we have got some Heibel Balasongs, another one where we've got several in stock right now, and this is the particular one that caught my eye. Less expensive than the Brian Tide, it's about $805 right here. We have an RWL 34 blade, four and three quarters of an inch long, and very interesting kind of tiger stripe pattern almost going on. You've got some layering, on the ground portion of the blade itself. It's not a, not a Damascus, but it is kind of like etched in somehow. You can feel kind of the layers going on right there. Kind of interesting. Handles are titanium, brought the color back. We've got some nice green here and a bit of a, a squared off handle, but the channels or you know, fullers almost, if you want to call them that, milled into the handles here, give you a really nice place for your fingers to manipulate these handles. Once you get used to that, I think you're gonna be able to do a lot of cool trick style things. Not that I'm very good at it anyway, as I always mention, and it always looks even more awkward as I do it here at the table, because I'm trying not to hit any knives underneath. So my apologies to the, uh, the true flippers out there. But the detailing on this is impressive in every single way, and we've got several different color options and blade styles to choose from right now if this one doesn't float your boat. Now if the price on that Hybel doesn't float your boat, we've also got 
two new color variations for the Kershaw Lucha. This is the standard version, not the newly unveiled uh, 20 CV and carbon fiber slash titanium handled versions. These are the Sandvik steel blade versions with steel handles, but we've got now two colors, an OD green and a bright crimson red, a very vibrant red in this case actually too. Blades themselves, you've got your Sandvik steel, as mentioned, black washed of that 14C28N material, original clip point shape, KVT ball bearings, and the handles you're probably used to if you've flipped the Lucha. And if you haven't, it's one of those kind of kind of bar setters at its price range for the performance you're able to get. And it's cool to see them continuing to offer some new options for folks out there. All right, next up we have some nice red and black handles on the Double Star Brimstone. And with a name like Brim Brimstone, the handles here actually are probably the best matched coloration for that name. Maybe orange and black might be a little better. But anyway, you get kind of the, you know, the Brimstone, same uh, Brimstone vibes with it. Just a really great everyday utility folder. Comes in about 70 bucks. You've got a three and a half inch blade of D2 steel with kind of that modified sheep's foot profile going on, hollow ground. It's just a fantastically useful blade shape right here. You're gonna be able to do just about anything you need day to day. The handle is one of those great shapes that's gonna work for just about anyone because of its kind of neutral shape and the way the back tapers around so you can fall off the back without feeling cramped if you do, uh, if you are holding it that way or you have really big paws. Mine are only slightly larger than average. I can see some really big mitted folks really getting back there. And I love the front, the way it gently kind of rolls towards the edge. There's something to be said for a more aggressive finger guard, but there's also something to be said for something that you have that control over. You don't have a finger guard getting in the way. We can get right up behind the edge, be really precise while you're cutting with it. A lot to appreciate there. We've got a liner lock for security. Liner on one side itself, because G10 is plenty strong without an additional liner there. And then you've got a nice broad pocket clip there to keep things safe and tucked away in your pocket. Flicks open really nicely. You've got washers in the pivot of this knife, which helps it in the uh, dustier environments versus something like your ball bearings. And yet it can still flick open in a very satisfying way. Next up and keeping the colors moving, we have the Tonto version of the SOG Aegis AT, $85 for these knives. You've got the same great handle as the, full, the regular Aegis, which means you have a hand filling grip, but one of the, uh, some people don't like this, but I don't mind this at all, depending on if it works for the design or not. In this case, I think it does. You have a full sized handle and a slightly shorter blade than you might expect given the handle length. Only about, uh, 3.1 inches on this D2 blade here. But you're able to get, with a knife like this, maximum control over the blade while having just the amount of blade you need in a way. Certainly plenty here to work with for heavier, heavier utility jobs if you need to. So you've got the kind of the, the reassuring feel in the hand to go with it. D2 steel, if I mentioned that already or not, not super thick, but broad and you've got a full flat grind. So even though it feels like a very sturdy pattern or a very sturdy knife shape, you've still got good slicing characteristics. You've got a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. You've got some accenting colors. This tab that sticks out here at the back doesn't really get in the way at all. In fact, my hands don't even get near it. And then of course you've got SOG's XR lock in assisted variety, which means you also get that spine mounted safety right there. So when the safety is engaged, you're not gonna be able to open the blade. Once it's not, you're able to flip that blade quite easily open because you've got that spring assist. All right, next up for $44, this actually feels fairly impressive for the money. We have a Black Fox multi-tool. And this one really kills the, uh, the color palette <laughs> this week, but it's a nice tool nonetheless. Very affordable, you've got the rotate open, You've got your combination plier heads here with replaceable uh, wire cutters at the base, and you've got spring loaded pliers as well that are quite comfortable to use. You've got essentially two ways to grip it since you've got, if you look on the inside, you've got two curves that interlock. So depending on which way feels more comfortable to you, you've got options. Options are always nice. 
Inside, you've got kind of a standard style of array of tools for a multi-tool ex with one exception, and that is you've actually got a hook-shaped blade here, either a package opener, belt cutter, that sort of thing. You don't see that too often on this, this style of knife, so that's pretty cool. You've also got a cap lifter and a can opener with your screwdriver tips. Then on the opposite side, you have a 3D Phillips, which is cool, and a nice awl. And no scissors on the inside, and that's because there's scissors on the outside. And they actually lock open. You just have to make sure you pull the, uh, the scissor arm out of the way so it can push back and engage the back spring. And then you've got a nice set of spring-loaded scissors with a blunt tip here on the underside if you're getting under something that you don't want to pierce underneath. Might be skin, might be something else. And then you've also got a main blade with a sh modified sheep's foot there. A little bit of belly to the edge itself. Not sure the steel on it, uh, but at this given price range, I'm not particularly concerned if it's not you know, particularly high end, which I doubt it would be. For the price, I gotta say, I'm definitely impressed with how well together, how well put together this particular tool feels. Comes also with, almost forgot, nylon belt sheath that can be carried vertically or horizontally. All right, I left all the uh, the fixed blades to last, so I'll try not to talk too long about them. We'll see. It's, it's something, it's a struggle, because I like fixed blades. Bradford Guardian 3, new ones in stock. Such a sweet little knife. About $162, made in the USA, three and a half inch M390 blade. Just one of those great EDC fixed blade designs. Yeah, it's got a little bit of kind of tactical vibes to it, but with the uh, the overground edge here into the finger choil, wouldn't be my uh, my first choice for a tactical knife, but for utility, it's great. The handle shape works well. Again, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but this style of handle that kind of rounds around the back instead of coming to an abrupt stop facilitates some extra holds that feel or facilitates a hold that feels more secure, even though you don't have like all four fingers necessarily fitting fully on it. So you can have a little bit of a longer blade and still feel like it's not getting away from you. Really dig this drop point shape. Works well for just about anything. M390 steel is gonna give you that great edge retention. Jade G10 handles with the black washed, black stone washed finish. Black wash is a Kershaw trademark. Um, Looks great. There's some other versions in stock right now. And I really dig the sheaths that this knife comes with. It's an undyed leather, stitched really nicely, and it's set up for horizontal carry. There was a time when uh, when I went camping, I would almost always have a uh, fixed blade mounted cross draw, a small fixed blade like this. This is right up my alley there. Works well for EDC because it stays kind of tucked and hidden away a little bit better than a vertical sheath can. Would be cool to see someone uh, do some pocket sheaths for these guys too, because I think this would make a great pocket fix blade to boot, but it's great EDC design no matter how you carry. Next up, we've got a new Italian made knife, the Mercury Trek, comes in about $140. You have got, what are we dealing with here, blade steel wise, N690 blade steel, not the uh, powder metaled M390, so edge retention's not gonna be up to the same snuff, but Really cool trailing point design. You can definitely do some of the hunting stuff with it. This would make a great food prep knife, great steak knife as well. Just super elegant. The Italians tend to do elegant knives just with a little touch of class that's a little bit a step above what a lot of other folks do. Milled, or sorry, crown spine continues all the way around the full tang knife till get to, until you get back to the Ricasso on the front side. Excellent contouring on the Santos mahogany wood handles here, but you've got micarta options if you'd rather go with those. Makes it fill the hand super, super nicely. Flares out towards the front so you can pinch really well. Works great for that sort of thing. Feels robust, full flat grind on the steel. Man, just very, very nice. The sheath we're dealing with is leather. It is black with white stitching, and you've got a retention strap there on the front. Standard vertical carry. Edges are finished really nicely. Really helps complete the classy package of this knife. Next up, I'm really happy to see wider availability of the all black version of Becker's BK18. Made, of course, by K-Bar. The other color was just fine, but I don't know. Becker always feels like it should be black. 
I like, I like it a little bit better even in this new color. Uh, $87 for this USA made knife. You've got your 1095 CV carbon steel with the smooth black coating and then the typical black tweener style handles as the uh, Becker heads call this size Becker knife that are just oh so comfortable to hold. And it's got one of those blade shapes. I mean, everyone talks about the BK-16 as one of the great do everything blade shapes and it is certainly. The BK-18 I feel like does everything the 16 can do and yet it can also do like tactical stuff a little bit better than the BK-16 can. You've got a great sweeping belly to the blade. It might even do some fruit, food prep stuff a little better too. Nice and cute point. The harpoon point on the, uh, or the harpoon clip style here doesn't get in the way, but you get a little extra style while you're at it. Just overall, it's a really impressive knife. The sheath system here is also a nice step up over the BK-16. Clicks in quite nicely, even without the uh, extra retention strap up here. It feels like it's gonna hold on to the knife just fine without it. You've got a nice drop system for the belt or the uh, the webbing, or, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for, Thomas? Belt loop. That. Thanks for the help. <laughs> just not today. Just not today. Um, what's nice about this is you can easily reverse it. It's got essentially the same attachment hardware here as the handles of the removable scales on this particular knife. So you can flip it around or you can remove it and you can attach uh, basically just about any aftermarket belt attachment system out there. It's gonna work great with the, uh, the tech locks and anything of that type of style quite nicely. Just works really well. And the thing Ethan likes to do is he'll use this kind of wide flat patch as a platform for building up a small survival kit that's strapped to the sheath itself. So if that's your sort of thing, if that sounds cool, definitely a great option there. And last but not least, we have a tactical fixed blade, the Mazarin Diceros, 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 I don't know how to pronounce this word, but that's okay. $230 for this knife. Beefy, chunky, overbuilt, and a very sturdy feel to it. D2 blade steel, five and a half inches of it. And that very, very aggressive Tonto profile. I like the stone washed finish, especially on something like D2. That's gonna help it with its corrosion resistance a little bit. The handles are G10. Nice shape going on to them. It's a little bit big, a little bit different at first, but I think it's gonna work even better. It's gonna work best for folks with bigger hands or for folks wearing uh, like heavier work or combat gloves, tactical gloves, that sort of thing. It's kind of shaped for that, shaped for a life of hard use, I think. Certainly pretty comfortable. You've got a protruding pommel there at the back with not necessarily a crisp point. Thing, the edges themselves are kind of rounded over, but a nice point for concentrating force if you need it. They definitely go all out with the sheath and included accessories here. Not only do you get a sheath, which is made out of nylon, you've got Velcro strap here, you've got a retention loop at the front, you've got two sets of pockets here on the front for extra little goodies that you might carry with you, such as one of them little survival chainsaw things and a diamond sharpener, both of which are included right out of the box. Oh, and then one detail that I forgot, you've also got a hip strap here to keep things from banging around when you're tromping through whatever environment you are tromping through. Feels really good and really nicely put together. But that is all I've got to show you this week. Let me know what you thought. And to get your hands on these knives, links will be in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Remember that Jack Wolf knife is coming out tomorrow, but we'll leave a link to the brand page in the video below. Let me know what you thought. And while you're over there at Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that you can earn some free money to spend on your next knives when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. That's Thomas behind the camera. See you next time.